Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. Today with me is Karen Lee. She is the Executive Director of Hawaii P20 Partnerships for Education. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Great to have you here. And as I was mentioning to you about two months ago, I interviewed um, Alex Harris, who is the Senior Officer for Education at CASO Foundation. We had a great conversation about public education, and today I'm looking forward to talking to you about this specific campaign that you have, or P20, Hawaii P20 has started. How many years ago did you Actually, start Actually, just this? about a year and a half. Ah. It's our 55 by 25 campaign. Okay. Trying to get more working age adults to have a college degree by the year 2025. Okay, so let me um, show this video um, Common Core video first, and then maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the genesis of the campaign and what you do at P uh, Hawaii P20. Great. Okay, producer, would you mind rolling that video? Students from kindergarten to 12th grade are learning to a higher standard. The Hawaii Common Core defines clear learning goals that empower students to think critically and apply their knowledge to real world scenarios. Created with the input of Hawaii's educators, the Common Core prepares students for college, career, and community success, and puts our state closer to reaching our 55% goal. Help us achieve Hawaii's education goal. Find out how at 55by25.org. Okay, Karen, I know that this is one of um, a few, I guess, TV spots that um, Hawaii P20 created. So. I know that there are a lot of other initiatives, but first off, what is Hawaii P20 <laughs> Partnerships for Education? Thank you for that question. We're um, a unit within the University of Hawaii mm -hmm. in academic affairs, and um, even though we are based at the University of Hawaii, I like to tell everyone that I actually have three bosses because we work on the education pipeline, early childhood through K-12, mm -hmm. through higher education, and then into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So my leadership really is the University of Hawaii President, David Lasner, mm -hmm. the DOE Superintendent, Kathy Matayoshi, and uh, the former Director of the Executive Office on Early Learning, which is based at the Governor's Office. Currently, it's not staffed, mm -hmm. but we still see that they are a partner through the education pipeline. And what we want to try to do is strengthen the education pipeline so that all students can experience college and career success. That's amazing. So you've got three bosses, <laughs> and I guess they all have their own perspective about um, college access, public education. Um, so how do you work with these uh, this diverse uh, team of bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the partnership has mm -hmm. never been stronger. And mm -hmm. I'm really lucky because the UH president and the DOE superintendent really get along very well. Mm -hmm. And they all see that our big goal for the state mm -hmm. is to have more educated mm -hmm. citizens and residents of Hawaii. So they are um, totally aligned in mm -hmm. setting their goals. And that makes my job really easy. So what we're trying to do is have more students ready through early childhood and early learning for the K-12 system, whether it's public or private, charter, whatever it is. Um, and then within K-12, get students prepared and ready for college, which we really see is essential for a diverse workforce in the state of Hawaii. Wow. And, and then graduate from college, obviously. That's pretty amazing. Now, um, I know that there are really a lot of initiatives. I mean, you just kind of summarized that it's, it's really a whole journey from early childhood to when, um, when a young person graduate and go into the workforce. But focusing on 55 by 25, so when, um, so you said it started about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So how did this whole idea come about then? So um, it all started with a People's Pulse survey, and I don't know if the producer has this one up, the initial People's Pulse survey. Um, I thought it was slide number seven, but I'm not totally sure. But mm -hmm. what happened with that survey that mm -hmm. Hawaii Business Roundtable had initially um, commissioned was that the public perception of the essential nature of a college degree was really declining. More and more of the families that were polled through the survey 
said that they didn't feel that a college education was necessary for a diverse workforce. When, when was the survey done? Uh, so initially it was uh -huh. winter 2012. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not that slide that's showing up. Sorry, mm -hmm. my, my, my error. That's okay. But um, in winter 2012 mm -hmm. is when our leadership started to get concerned about the perceptions of a college degree. Mm -hmm. And um, what what we did was we talked to some business leaders about this mm -hmm. and we decided we needed to launch a larger community campaign mm -hmm. around how important degrees are for the future of our workforce in Hawaii. Do you have some numbers? Because I know I've yeah. read um, about college, uh, having a college degree, but do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we usually, many states rely on um, the Georgetown University Center on the on Education and the Workforce puts out these projections of how many jobs will require some post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. And for Hawaii, what they're saying is that by the year 2020, 70% mm -hmm. of jobs in Hawaii will require some post-secondary education or more. Wow, that's in five years' time. That's only in five years' time. <laughs> oh my time. gosh, 70 percent. 70 percent. And currently, according to the American Community Survey through the U.S. Census, mm -hmm. only about 44.3 percent of our working age adults have a college degree. So wow. we're not there yet. Okay, so that's across the nation. That's right. in Hawaii. Oh, that's in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so if we need 70%, they're not saying needs a degree, but they're saying needs some post-secondary mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. and yet only about 44% currently have that college degree. We're talking a two-year or four-year college degree, then we definitely have a gap there wow. um, in terms of the needs of the workforce. Wow. Is and this so, the one? Yeah, yeah, so this actually is um, a survey we did with, um, with employers mm -hmm. asking them how prepared students are. Mm -hmm. And um, as you can see here, uh, what employers need mm -hmm. and what they're actually seeing in terms of high school graduates coming in to an entry level uh, job, they're not ready. That's a huge gap that we are talking about. And I gap. guess um, I, this is not only a discussion here in the state, but um, probably globally, I guess I've seen it in some yes. other international magazines saying that, well, um, college degree, a bachelor's degree is equivalent to a high school degree from long time ago. Is that correct? That's really true these days. Mm -hmm. Employers are really looking for people with more education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I often hear about mm -hmm. for recent grads is we'll hear their parents say, well, my child just got a college degree and they're not employed or they're underemployed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say also that when you look at those who are unemployed, mm -hmm. that those who are unemployed are way less likely to have a college degree than those that are currently employed. So even when we went through the recession, mm -hmm. those who were laid off really were the ones without a college degree. I have so many other questions. <laughs> Let's go back to that survey first. When you say that you did this survey and some people think, think that, well, college degree is really not necessary, I'm really surprised to hear that. I was surprised too. So do you know why they would, they would make a statement like that? We did some mm. more in-depth analysis mm -hmm. and many, um, so these are mainly people who were at home during the time the telephone poll had taken oh. place through OmniTrack. Mm -hmm. And many families felt like, well, I didn't have a college degree and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You know, in my generation, I didn't need to get a college degree mm -hmm. and I'm making a living wage. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think times have really changed for our right. young people right. and it's no longer enough, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. to have a high school diploma. But um, even though I guess the survey was taken during the day when uh, I guess these people, respondents, were stay at home and they felt that they didn't need a degree, but I guess it sends a strong signal <laughs> to the next generation for those who are with these families. Then. That's right. So we, we do have to work in conjunction with the Department of Education and Schools mm -hmm. to change parent perception, which is very difficult. But we want communities and families to really encourage their young people mm -hmm. to go for it and get the college degree. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about a four-year Harvard education. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a community college degree or going to trade school. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a bachelor's degree or beyond, but really pushing on beyond that high school diploma. I okay. think a lot of people are surprised um, when we tell them these days plumbers, construction workers, 
cosmetologists, beauticians, many of them need training beyond mm -hmm. high school. Right. So, um, you know, in order to get those licenses, mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. the certifications, they need to continue on with their education. So when you say that 55% of the workforce will get some type of degree, it's really either two or four year degree. That's um, right. So the goal is really realistic because as you said, a lot of these jobs, they, they require some kind of certification. Now you've done survey with, um, I guess, certain segment of the society, but um, I'm just curious, what about for, for high school kids? These are, I guess, the pipeline to, to college, to universities. Yes. Um, is there a separate survey to ask if they are interested in going on with their, to pursue their higher education? Yeah, so thank you for that question. Um, not part of this campaign, but mm -hmm. one of the federal grants that my organization mm -hmm. runs, Gear Up, mm -hmm. um, which is a federal grant to prepare low-income students okay. for college, mm -hmm. um, we do ask students, do you want to go to college? You know, is that an aspiration mm -hmm. of yours? And overwhelmingly, 80 to 90 percent of high school students do want to go to college. Okay. It's just that somewhere along the way in high school, mm -hmm. they may feel like they don't have the skills or the support or that college is just too high an attainment for them. Oh, okay. And so with um, parts of my organization, but working with high schools mm -hmm. and with the UH campuses, we're trying to increase that perception so that students know that they can go to college, whether it's at a community college or a four-year baccalaureate institution. Now, you brought up um, college access. Sometimes it can be challenging. Mm -hmm. So since you launched the campaign about a year ago, um, this 55 by 25 uh, campaign, um, what are some of the things that you have achieved and that you're proud of? Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, last January, mm -hmm. so 2014, um, with the former governor Abercrombie, mm -hmm. we launched our big press conference um, with legislators from education committees, with our sponsors. You may have seen at the end of our commercial that we have Hawaii Pacific Health as a sponsor, mm -hmm. uh, First Insurance, mm -hmm. Hawaiian Airlines, Queens Health Systems, you know, so a number of local companies that were really behind us working together. Mm -hmm. And so we launched that, that press conference saying that we really wanted to um, get behind this as a state, not just as one education agency, mm -hmm. to say that we're all in this together and that we can really help our kids attain this goal. Mm -hmm. um, so we produced four different uh, radio spots, we mm -hmm. produced four different TV spots, one of which you just saw, mm -hmm. um, and we have seen public perception really on the rise. Okay. So we went back and resurveyed uh, the you know 750 families through the People's Pulse uh -huh. um, using OmniTrac, mm -hmm. and we have seen it going up oh, just in oh, the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep up the pressure um, to tell families that, that this is really important. Now, earlier on, you brought, uh, you mentioned that this is a community-wide campaign, and I had a chance to go on your website, and uh, people can actually go on your website and pledge. Want to tell, tell us about yeah, that, uh, that particular piece there? So one of the things that we did was we created a website, and we really do encourage everybody to go on the website because there's a wealth of information for parents of young children, parents of college age students, mm -hmm. for employers, um, for other educators. Mm -hmm. Simple tips like if you have a one-year-old, read to them at nighttime for 20 minutes a day, mm -hmm. you know, um, or start your college savings account, something like that. Mm -hmm. And the website is www.55by25.org. So mm -hmm. the number is 55by25.org. And there you can find a lot of information and you can pledge your support, which is very easy to do just by clicking the button mm -hmm. and showing your pledge. And we have over 13 or 1400 pledges That's so great. far, mm -hmm. just to say that we are in it as a small community. You know, mm -hmm. everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're in this together in order to get more educated citizens. Well, um, I'm going to ask the producer to show us the website again t uh, at the end of, of our interview so the audience can go online and make their pledge. But we're coming on a break, but uh, I'd like to find out, um, I guess after the break we can talk about if there are similar campaigns on the mainland and I guess if you learn from each other so great yeah, yes that would be great talk about that. my guest is Karen Lee she is the executive director of Hawaii P20 partnerships for education we'll be right back
Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week, we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Uh, my name is Alice Lee Hagen, and my guest today is Karen Lee, Executive Director of Hawaii P20 Partnerships for Education. If you're just joining us, we've been talking about the 55 by 25 campaign initiated by the P20 Partnerships for Education. Now, Karen, um, you, we've talked a lot about the community involvement, the, um, I guess, the the interest that uh, the business community has shown in this mm -hmm. campaign. And before the break, I was asking you whether there are similar campaign or movement um, on the U.S. mainland. So thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so first, I, I kind of failed to, to mention that this goal, the 55% goal, was actually adopted by the Hawaii P20 Council back in 2007. So it's been around for quite some time. We just really haven't had the opportunity mm -hmm. to launch the campaign. Mm -hmm. And our council is made up of about 33 business, nonprofit, community, government leaders who come together and said, we need to put this goal in writing. Mm -hmm. So it was set a long time ago. And since then, what we found is that several states have adopted very similar goals. Oh. Um, so Tennessee, for example, has the Drive to 55 initiative. Oh, so they have what? a similar goal, 55%. Oh, so, okay. uh -huh. It's called Drive to 55. Uh -huh. The Lumina Foundation, which is based in Indiana, mm -hmm. has a goal of 60% of mm -hmm. their um, citizens would have a credential okay. or a two or four year degree. Mm -hmm. So we're all kind of some, I think um, President Obama has also ad um, ad adopted the 60% goal. Okay. Um, so there are several states that have really put a stake in the ground to say, you know, that, that we're going to do this together. Um, I'm just thinking that Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. their state with their mayor at the helm mm -hmm. um, has a similar campaign. So their city, their city was the one that really adopted oh, a wow. campaign. So mm -hmm. it's pretty neat to see that um, we're all in this together. Right and that we all need to see more Americans mm -hmm. as a whole mm -hmm. having higher degrees. Do you actually talk about um, how you're progressing in these initiatives with these different states then? You know, we don't have any um, formalized consortium or mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. but because I am and our superintendent and our president are a part of many state-led initiatives, mm -hmm. Um, we come together for various grants that we run or various state initiatives around the Common Core standards mm -hmm. um, or higher standards in higher learning. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to share this kind of information to each other mm -hmm. and really encourage each other to, to press on. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the Lumina Foundation now has a website. I don't know it offhand, mm -hmm. but they have a website where they're collecting information on these various oh, campaigns wow. okay. um, and so it's it's neat to see that that other states um, their information is up on that website that's too. great now um, I'm just curious now you gave us some statistics before the break um, you were saying that um, in five years time we really should have uh, a lot of the jobs would really request 70% uh, of the job would require some kind of um, um, Post-secondary, post thank you, education. Yeah. So yep. currently we are at about 45%. So um, how do we compare with the other states? Yeah, uh, we're actually very similar. It depends mm. what state you look at. Mm. Some states have their residents 
at only about 30 percent having a post-secondary mm -hmm. education degree. There are other states like Massachusetts mm -hmm. and Ohio, um, Washington State that have a much higher percentage. Mm -hmm. um, part of it depends on what industries they have and are requiring. Mm -hmm. um, some states tend to import their people, <laughs> you know, from other states. Mm -hmm. um, and a place like Hawaii, we actually have quite a number of adults with post-secondary education, but many of them are retired. Oh. So that's why our goal is around working age adults, mm -hmm. because that's really the goal that we need to oh, okay. to set for you know those that are actually working in the state. Oh, I see, because yeah. I always think that you're thinking about high school students, so it's really not. It's really the working adults then. The goal is for the working adults, but it starts from 25 ah, to age 65. Okay, okay. So, so we're really saying more of our working age should be, should have degrees. Wow. So how would you encourage that? Because um, I'm glad you um, clarified that because it's a whole different set of uh, issues to deal with because I'm, I guess I'm an adult and it's hard to go back to school is, um, yeah. and to learn and I guess we've launched programs where we attract working professionals and these are physicians, nurses, and they've been out of school for a long time and they get scared. So how do you convince a working, oh. ad, a working adult to go back to school and get their oh. certificate? So, so I, should, I, I didn't mean to mislead you. Mm. Um, at Hawaii P20, we mm. are working on the traditional pipeline oh, okay. of students. So okay. we are thinking about um, those in K, early childhood and K-12 oh, okay. going to college. Okay. Because the data is very clear that if mm. students don't go straight on from high school mm. to college, mm. it is much tougher yeah. for students to return back to college. So yeah. we work on the traditional pipeline ah, so see. that once they're graduating, they're close to 25, uh -huh. and then we want to be able to you know, look at, do our census review mm. and see how many really do have that college degree. So yes, we are working on oh, okay. the traditional <laughs> pipeline. But, but I should mention uh -huh. that at the University of Hawaii Community mm -hmm. Colleges, mm -hmm. they are really pushing for more adults to come back and get their degrees. Yeah. Because we are seeing in, in that mm -hmm. group, age group, working mm -hmm. age adults, that many of them still only have a high school degree or don't have a two-year degree or mm -hmm. a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. So they're really working hard at getting some of these um, adults to retrain mm -hmm. by coming back to college and getting yeah. a different degree or another degree yeah. or a degree, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So so yes, you, you were right initially. Okay. That is uh, who we're targeting. Oh, I see. Yeah, but, but uh, I'm glad you brought up uh, the community college because mm -hmm. I guess before the show we always say okay when we hear about the University of Hawaii uh, we, there are a lot of challenges but uh, um, the community colleges are really at the forefront in a lot of the training programs um, yes. I guess vocational training or um, yeah uh, just they are doing a lot and I think um, we need to hear more from from them about their success stories yes now, um, but having said that, let's go back to um, some of the community. Well, I guess I'm more interested in the business partners that sure. you have. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, H HPH, I guess Hawaiian Airline First Insurance. Mm -hmm. You've talked to these business partners, and um, I'm just curious, uh, are we doing enough to um, foster or develop a workforce that would fit in to what they they need in in um, in their organization, perhaps. Yeah. So you raise a very good point. It's not just any degree, but a mm -hmm. degree that would really lead to a living mm -hmm. wage job in mm -hmm. in many of these um, companies. And that is something that we have talked to with mm -hmm. our sponsors mm -hmm. about making sure that um, we are training adequately with the right degrees. Mm -hmm. um, so many of our sponsors have told us that they want. Um, students with relevant degrees, mm -hmm. um, with some kind of internship or job training and skills, mm -hmm. um, not just a any kind of liberal arts degree. Right. So that's something you mentioned. The community colleges, mm -hmm. um, they're doing a really great job in. They're trying to partner more with their regional businesses to make sure that the the degrees are are relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, we, many of our community colleges and, and UH Manoa, UH West Oahu, mm -hmm. and um, UH Hilo have advisory committees mm -hmm. made up of business leaders, and so they're really trying to work mm -hmm. hand in hand that way. Glad you brought up UH Hilo. This, this 
just thought just came to mind. Um, I guess when we talk about 55 by 25, very often the issues are focused here on Oahu. Mm -hmm. What about on the neighbor islands? Um, are there unique, I guess, opportunities or challenges there? There are, mm -hmm. and what, what we've really seen is that the economic drivers on the neighbor islands um, are more centered around some of our UH campuses and mm -hmm. high schools. Mm -hmm. You know, um, on an island like Kauai, mm -hmm. the high schools there have a huge impact on what's happening mm -hmm. on that island. Mm -hmm. um, Kauai Community College is a huge economic driver for that island. Mm -hmm. Same with UH Hilo, and we see the numbers of people that are employed there, working there, affiliated with mm -hmm. UH Hilo. It's, it's really big. And so um, I, I'm really pleased to say that many of our UH campuses there work really closely with their community partners. Mm -hmm. And they really can't put a degree there without the community and business leaders saying that's really relevant. Mm -hmm. um, they probably have closer relationships than many of our Oahu schools oh, really? and campuses. Oh, wow. Um, but it, it's really nice to see that, mm -hmm. that there's that type of partnership going on. Oh, that's going good. On. Um, going back to your earlier comment, um, when you talk to businesses, uh, of course they're looking at um, somebody with job skills, uh, particular degree, internship. Um, it, I guess given uh, the graduates right now, mm -hmm. and uh, it, is there anything that, for example, um, we could do better in terms of uh, um, educating our young people so that they are more, more job ready and marketable? Yeah, that that's a good question, mm -hmm. and I'll have to admit that mm -hmm. um, my group does not really work okay. specifically on job skills. Mm -hmm. But as I go around now talking to Rotary Clubs mm -hmm. and to Chamber of Commerce subcommittees, I do hear that more and more, that it's not enough just to have the degree, but mm -hmm. to also have the skills. Mm -hmm. Of course, from my point of view, I'm saying get the degree first, uh, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. or at least in the process of getting the degree, mm -hmm. get your job skills mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But without that degree, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're, you're not really uh, ahead of the mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely we're seeing that more and more employers want to have the relevant jobs. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we did with our campaign, and some of your viewers may have seen, mm -hmm. we did these one-page ads in the Star Advertiser, right. as well as in the HMSA um, Island Scene. Uh, oh. uh, they have a magazine oh, okay. that comes out. So we did one-page mm -hmm. ads. Um, in partnership with our sponsors. So what we did was, for example, for Queen's Health System mm -hmm. Systems, we, we highlighted real employees mm -hmm. at Queen's, mm -hmm. put down their names, where they went to high school, mm -hmm. where they got their degree, and what kind of degree, mm -hmm. so that when people saw it, they could say, oh, they went to Kaiser High School, they got mm -hmm. a radiology tech degree mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. Piolani Community College, mm -hmm. and now they're working at Queen's, so that we could make it really real for right. people to see what kind of right I wish I there. had pulled that off from your website but if I guess the audience is interested in uh, looking at those ads it's actually in your website mm -hmm. and the website again is 55by25.org glad you brought that up um, what about internships um, I guess I always hear that um, I guess even some of my undergraduate assistant at my office, uh, they, they talk about getting internship. And that seems to be a very critical piece in mm -hmm. getting uh, work experience and perhaps getting to know the company and for the company to get to know the, um, the particular student. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you work with companies? Do you talk about internship or is it something beyond your scope? Um, we don't do anything directly for internships, mm -hmm. but we work with a lot of high school students and we definitely encourage students to get mm -hmm. as much work experience mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. Earlier in this broadcast, we showed um, the Career Ready Survey and what employers are telling us is that many students, when they come for entry level jobs, don't realize they have to come to mm -hmm. work every day at the same time every day. <laughs> <laughs> and that they have to work in collaboration with other team members, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, that they need some soft skills like public speaking mm -hmm. or um, having presentation skills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are kind of new for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. so where students can get those skills before they enter the workforce through internships or different job opportunities, mm -hmm. 
I think that they are more likely to be successful mm. in their different jobs. And Alice, I was going to actually say, you probably know through the Shiloh College uh -huh. of Business, the amazing internship um, office that's there mm -hmm. that's doing a great job in partnering the College of Business graduates with well, internships. Th Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> yes, they. Um, yes, we do have the career office and uh, internship and career office, and they are doing an amazing job. Um, and I guess because we are business college, um, it it helps really helps to make the connection. And uh, we've Hi, got I'm a lot of supporting um, supportive yes. business partners, and and we're grateful. We're grateful to that, but I know that you've worked at the business college <laughs> I before. used to work way a long time ago at the College of Business. Yeah. But uh, we're coming up on a second break, but um, after the break, I'm interested in learning more about, well, there are a lot of successes with the ca campaign, but I guess I'm interested in hearing some of the challenges that you have to face. Well, for example, I, you, know, you made a comment about going to Rotary Club. So I presume you have to go out a lot to, to make personal connections and spread the word about these campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to find out more <laughs> about that later on. Okay, thank you. My guest is Karen Lee. She is the Executive Director for Hawaii P20 Partnerships for Education. We will be right back, and you're watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the host of Where the Road Leads. It shows every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Aloha, Yappers. This is your host, Kingsley, for the Yap Show. Every Friday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch us here live. Think Tech Hawaii, and then later on we upload to our YouTube channel. We talk about youth issues, policies, uh, youth programs, and how to transition yourself into adulthood. But this was like a sign, I guess. Hey, Mike's <laughs> like, hey, right. now's your chance to go back to school, which uh, I'm doing. Catch us here again live, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha. Getting a good job and earning a steady income requires early planning, because learning starts the moment a child is born. A child who hears more words in their early years is better prepared when they start school. And a good start is key to future academic success. Read to your child 20 minutes a day and put them on a path to college and a bright future. Help us achieve Hawaii's education goal! Find out how at 55by25.org. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. If you're just joining us, my guest today is Karen Lee, Executive Director to Hawaii P20 Partnerships for Education. We've been talking about the organization's um, campaign uh, on 55 by 25. So it's a goal where the workforce in Hawaii will, 55% uh, of the workforce will have a college degree, a two to four year college degree by 2025 in 10 years time. I got that right, right? Yes, okay. very good. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> so Karen, um, well, I guess at break, um, our producer was showing a video clip on early childhood uh, education. Mm -hmm. And you said that um, businesses are beginning to be really interested in yes. that. Tell us about that. Yes, so um, many of the viewers may know that President Obama mm -hmm. has really been pushing the Early Childhood Education Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, many business leaders across the states of the nation really are seeing the value in investing early mm -hmm. in young children to get them ready, to get them prepared for kindergarten, first and second grade. Mm -hmm. um, it's been an investment that has shown to pay off because then we have less students with special education needs, more students ready to go and learn in kindergarten. And the telltale sign for early childhood is that students are reading at grade level by grade three. And that's a, a mini goal of ours at Hawaii P20 is that more students would read at grade level by mm -hmm. the third grade. Mm -hmm. So just recently, about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago, Ben Bernanke, who used to be the Federal Reserve Chair, mm -hmm. put out a piece, I, I had quoted him for a while, in the New York Times talking about 
investing in early childhood is really the way to go. Okay. Um, a couple years ago, the Castle Foundation, you had mentioned mm -hmm. Alex Harris from the Castle Foundation mm -hmm. was on this program. They commissioned a study that showed in Hawaii for every $1 invested in early learning, the state will see a $4.20 return. Wow. Um, and so we really are pushing for more children to have a high quality preschool experience mm -hmm. so that they are ready with their ABCs and their mm -hmm. counting of one to 10, mm -hmm. ready to sit and, and be socio-emotionally ready to learn mm -hmm. by the time they hit kindergarten. Well, I, I think this can be a discussion on its own, yeah. but I know that uh, it was last year, the state, there was a big discussion about whether um, preschool should be publicly funded. Right. Um, where is that going with the new administration? Because I am sure that there is nobody who would disagree with what you just <laughs> told us. Uh, I, it would be really hard to find people saying that, okay, you shouldn't. So where, where, where are we going with that, with preschoolers, with um, yeah, early childhood education? So as you mentioned last year, uh, there was a constitutional amendment uh, request on mm -hmm. the ballot asking our public whether um, early childhood preschool should be funded by the state mm -hmm. and unfortunately that um, ballot initiative did not pass. Mm -hmm. With Governor Ige, Ige, I know that publicly has he has stated that he is definitely in favor of preschool just in a public arena, mm -hmm. so through the K-12 education and not through private preschool oh. providers. Um, right now we're, we're kind of just waiting to see um, where he's um, where his stance is on, on early childhood education mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I know also his wife is an educator. Um, and so we're very optimistic that mm -hmm. he is supportive of the early learning initiative as well as K-12 and higher education. That's such an amazing number. Um, $1 spent, you get $4.20 in return. Yes. Wow. And that was an older study, so mm -hmm. I don't know if it will change mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. But, but it makes sense. Um, now, let me go back to that question before the break about the challenges for you. Working, um, this is a huge mission that, that you're undertaking. I mean, you're looking at, um, I guess, a portion of a person's lifetime. <laughs> so A big portion <laughs> of it. <laughs> yes, that's true. So um, you're really post positive, you're passionate about what you're doing, and I know you have a lot of background in education. Um, but there must be some challenges that you encounter. So do you mind sharing that with us? I know. How much time do we have? <laughs> Um, well, with this campaign in particular, you know, initially our leadership thought, well, you know, let's go with kind of a smaller campaign, mm -hmm. maybe targeting businesses alone. And then when we saw the numbers with the People's Pulse Survey, we realized we needed to make it a community-wide campaign. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you and say, you know, my background all is in, in education. I don't know anything about communications or running a communications campaign oh. or anything like that. Uh -huh. Luckily, I have, we have some experts on, on our staff who mm -hmm. really have done a great job with, with the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but it, in general, educators, we don't know anything about you know, getting the word out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and so it's been a challenge to me to, I, I've learned that the message has to be concise, it has to be constant, mm -hmm. um, and that we need to do it wide scale as well as grassroots mm -hmm. and so you know we have those commercials we have the radio spots we've we're really fortunate to get funding so that we could put star advertiser ads mm -hmm. in but also i am doing on a more grassroots level talking to several rotary clubs mm -hmm. um and and as i mentioned some of the chamber of commerce subcommittees as well mm -hmm. and that's where i really get to hear a lot of feedback mm -hmm. um, many of them are business leaders or employers and mm -hmm. so they can tell me what they're thinking about mm -hmm. the workforce coming in mm -hmm. and many of them m m huge majority of them tell me that we're on the right track, oh, that good. we need to have uh -huh. more of the workforce educated mm -hmm. with relevant degrees. Mm -hmm. they, the Hawaii businesses do not want to import employees from the mainland. They mm -hmm. want to have local students be trained and skilled so that they can stay in Hawaii and make a living wage. It's so encouraging to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, They mm -hmm. don't want to 
go and recruit somebody from Nebraska. They mm -hmm. want a Hawaii student to stay Yeah, there. but that's another whole different discussion because um, as much as we don't want to import uh, workers, but I know that for certain um, professionals, yeah. uh, uh, they are doing that. So um, I, is there, do, do you see that the situation will improve down the road? I, I guess I'm looking at engineering because um, my husband works at Pearl Harbor and I hear stories. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Mm -hmm. I think as a state and mm -hmm. as several large education agencies coming together, mm -hmm. the discussion has been very good mm -hmm. around making sure that our upcoming workforce is mm -hmm. trained in the right, with the right skills. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it takes a lot. It's huge. Mm -hmm. um, just recently I was hearing that mm -hmm. as a nation we invest something like $65 billion in education, wow. in public education wow. every year. Uh -huh. $65 billion. And so to really turn an industry around, to change people's perceptions is not easy. Mm -hmm. It's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but since you brought up engineering, mm -hmm. I'm super excited because I know at UH Manoa, the College of Engineering has done an amazing outreach job working with their feeder community colleges mm -hmm. around this degree called the ASNS. It's the Associate um, Science Degree in Natural Science, oh, okay. where um, students at the community colleges are getting this associate's degree mm -hmm. and then transferring in huge numbers to the College of Engineering at Manoa. Oh, that is great. And so now we're looking at pathways for not just engineering, but many of the other STEM pathways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I do see the tide changing. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take some time. Right, and then I guess uh, another different conversation is um, I guess a lot of high school students, they go away and uh, right. how do you bring them back and um, feed into the workforce, but as I said, this is another conversation. Agreed, I agreed, and that's another tough uh, topic to tackle. <laughs> do, do you actually have to deal with that in what you do um, with P20? You know, um, surprisingly, mm -hmm. not that much. Mm -hmm. um, we have partnerships with private schools, mm -hmm. and many of them do talk about that. Mm -hmm. For us, because a huge part of our focus is on underrepresented students oh, and low-income students who may not even decide to go to college, what we're really trying to do is get more of them to consider some type of college degree, mm -hmm. some type of post-secondary education, mm -hmm. and where we can bring somebody who would not have not necessarily gone mm -hmm. to go and get something is of a course. huge win yeah. for the state. Mm -hmm. So I, I get the whole brain drain, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, argument mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. but we're really trying to tell more students go get a degree, right. there are many avenues right. open to you. Right. And even if you do go to the mainland, just be sure to come back and mm -hmm. contribute back to your mm -hmm. community. And, and I think people do want to come come back to raise their family. I think so, so. I yeah. did, I mean, you know, my, my husband did as well. Oh, so okay. we're, we're very, you know, happy yes. to be back in Hawaii. Okay. Now, um, I guess my one last question for you is, now uh, 55 by 25 is, uh, campaign is ongoing, and I know you have so many other initiatives. Is there something else that's brand new that's in the pipeline for you? Thank you for that question. Um, you know, um, many people may not know that at Hawaii P20, this is clearly a signature campaign that mm -hmm. we are running, but our core mission is around getting students prepared for the next um, pipeline mm -hmm. uh, agency, so mm -hmm. whether it's K-12 or higher education. Mm -hmm. And um, one big initiative that we're working very closely with the Harold Castle Foundation, mm -hmm. with um, the federal grant we're running Gear Up with the Department of Education and the University of Hawaii, is our Early College High School Initiative. Oh, what and is that? what's really neat about this mm -hmm. is through this program, we have 12 high schools that are working with us. Mm -hmm. We're getting more students' college credits while they're still in high school. Okay. And so with early college, mm -hmm. we have students getting dual credits, so mm -hmm. they're getting uh, high school credits towards their diploma mm -hmm. and college credits towards whatever college they're mm -hmm. going to, hopefully mm -hmm. in the university system, but you know, anywhere really. Mm -hmm. um, so because 
so many studies that we've seen as well as nationally, mm -hmm. we have seen students with six to 12 college credits by the time they graduate are more likely to go to college, mm. persist in college, and graduate from college. Oh, wow. And so there are some high schools in the state, Waipahu High School, mm -hmm. uh, Waiakea on the Big Island, mm -hmm. Kaimuki High School, Farrington, mm -hmm. where we have big groups of students enrolled now in high school that are on their way to getting an associate's degree mm -hmm. before they even graduate from high wow. school. So they'll that's get the high school amazing. diploma and an associate's degree by age 18. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, but that gives them a huge leg up yes. to either go and continue on and transfer to mm -hmm. a university mm -hmm. or go straight into the workforce. Mm -hmm. And so together we're funding this and uh, we've brought in a couple of experts to help the schools oh. push along with this. And it's very exciting. Very, that's very that's exciting. exciting. Um, I'm glad, so glad you brought that up because I think we have a lot of amazing young people, high school students. I had a chance to meet with a few last weekend for the senior project. Um, it's so promising and it's great. I'm so glad to talk to you today about all these different initiatives that, and campaign that you are overseeing. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank you. And hopefully maybe we'll check back in with you sometime in the future. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for coming yeah. to the show. My guest is Karen Lee, the Executive Director of Hawaii P20 Partnerships for Education. You've been watching ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Do join us next week. Aloha. <laughs>